There's no such thing as a slip. There's no such thing as misspeaking or of making silly jokes, at least when you live in the left. Now, people on the right in mainstream conservatism will apologize for something similar to what we're seeing here, for sure. The story, Michael Brzezinski apologizes for calling Mike Pompeo a butt boy. Apology from Morning Joe co-host comes after remarks were widely criticized as homophobic. I didn't think this was a story. I don't care that Micah Brzezinski called someone a butt boy. And the point I was trying to make earlier is we have seen instances where conservatives have said, you know, have done similar things and have apologized. You know, on Fox News just last week or whatever, it was uh, Kid Rock. He called Joy Behar a bitch. And Fox News apologized like three times, like immediately and then again after they switched back to the newsroom and then again at the end of the segment. So conservatives are not immune to this as uh, either. But I do think it's absolutely silly that Michael Brzezinski made a statement and she has to apologize. And The Guardian writes about it and then I think it's, oh God, I'm making a video about it. I don't want to necessarily talk about what Michael Brzezinski is doing, but let's read the story and see what she said. Michael Brzezinski, co-host of Morning Joe, has swiftly apologized for remarks she made in her MSNBC program directed at Secretary of State Mike Pompeo that were widely criticized as homophobic. Brzezinski was commenting on an interview Pompeo had given to Fox and Friends in which he said the CIA's conclusion that Saudi Arabia's Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman had ordered the death of dissident journalist Jamal Khashoggi were inaccurate. Why doesn't Mike Pompeo care right now, she asked. Are the pathetic deflections that we just heard when he appeared on Fox and Friends, is that a patriot speak speaking or a wannabe dictator's butt boy, she asked. The network seemingly attempted to bleep out her comment often used as a derogatory term for homosexual men, but was unsuccessful in doing so, the comments were derided on social media from both left and right. I don't want to play the comment because I could get in trouble. But yeah, one thing I noticed was really weird about the clip is that like shortly before she says it, I think it ble it like go drops audio because I think they caught it and tried to get rid of it and they couldn't. So sad that Michael Brzezinski's work for women's advocacy has been sullied by her awful homophobic slur, one critic wrote. The LGBT community deserves the same advocacy, respect, and empowerment as any disenfranchised gender, minority, or group. This hate speech has hurt women's and LGBTQ causes. Has it now? Because here's the crux of the story. Michael Brzezinski said a bad word, and whew, everybody jumps on her. But what happens, excuse me, what happens when the target of the slur is a conservative, an actual conservative LGBTQ person. Well, for some reason, Micah Brzezinski's butt boy comment is horrifying. But what about this story? Seriously, just deadspin.com writes this. Where's the controversy? Where's the apology? She said butt boy. It was a slip. Yeah, she probably should have said something else. Everybody's criticizing, criticizing her for this. But where is the left coming out and say, dude, not okay, not okay. This story, I don't want to read the title because someone will take the title from a clip out of context and then claim that I said it. Suffice it to say, Deadspin is writing and disparaging conservative gay individuals. And this is the real outrage. I can't believe, it's, it's mind-numbing that this is what gets play. What gets play is the fact that on MSNBC, Michael Brzezinski said a dumb word. Yeah, okay, we get it. It was, it was a dumb word, end of story. But then you see the far-left media write overtly offensive, like, seriously, they're actually targeting conservative gay people. Like, that is hate speech. Like, this is literally targeting a gay person. It should fall under hate speech rules. But this is the story that we get. But they go on because they make some uh, some other really interesting points about how people have mocked Putin and Trump and, and used homosexuality as the as the point of, of, of humor. Someone said, I was with you, Morning Mika, right up to the butt boy comment. Try roadie or lackey or stool pigeon or ass kisser or traitor, but maybe don't equate homosexuality with Mike Pompeo carrying water for the murderous regime in Saudi Arabia. They say, you know, they go on. There's a lot of uh, other criticism. How can Kevin Hart... Be, essenti be essentially forced to lose his Oscar gig for comments he made years ago. But Micah can make a seriously homophobic slur on a major news station. Brzezinski apologized. She admitted fault. She said, totally agree with you. Super bad choice of words, she wrote. I should have said water boy. Someone pointed out, they bring up this tweet. They say, the controversy echoes the reaction to a recurring joke on NBC Saturday Night Live in which the relationship between the Saudi crown prince, Vladimir Putin, and Donald Trump was framed as a romantic one 
and took on a homoerotic context. It follows the recent announcement that comedian Kevin Hart would no longer be hosting the, the Academy Awards, yada yada. This is from John Levenstein. He says, someone at SNL has got to stand up and say it's not funny to suggest Trump and Putin are lovers. It's stupid and homophobic, and I can't find the joke. And for those who think it's hilarious, you did it, you enjoyed it, let's get it together, guys. It's really funny, because when I pointed this thing out a while ago, that making jokes about Putin and Trump being lovers isn't funny, because I don't think it's comedy to point out that some men love each other, or some women love each other. I just, look, what year is it, okay? And what's, what's weird is that it's coming from the left, and this what really bothers me. The point I'm bringing up is, sure, okay, criticize Michael Brzezinski for making the joke, but John Levenstein is right. And the point then goes one step further, that the left has no problem calling out gay people as long as they're conservative. They can write this saying they need to shut the F up, and that pisses me off. I don't care what your political beliefs are to a certain extent. I'm not a fan of extremists. So long as you are not a violent <laughs> individual and you have bad ideas, you can say your ideas, sure, that's fine. I personally, look, I've said it a million times, I don't like hate speech. I don't. I think Deadspin has an absolute right to publish this, to say whatever they want, so I know that they're bad people. Sure, they can say it. I don't think they should be banned. I just think it's absolutely hip hypocritical and frustrating to no end to see the left, who claims to be the ones that are actually in favor of protecting people, then go and just spit all over people for their political reasons. But notice, this the first word, conservative, is the descriptor of who they're actually going after gays. They don't like people who are gay for having specific views. This article is not targeting conservatives. It's not saying, hey, conservatives, shut the F up. They're talking about gay people. It is the fact that the people are gay that they're being targeted by Deadspin. That really bothers me. It does. I don't care who you love. I don't care what you want to do behind closed doors. In fact, I would defend your right to love who you want to love and do what you want to do behind closed doors as long as you're consenting adults. This is, is it's, they should be allowed to publish it. Sure. Um, am I offended by it? A little bit, yeah. Am I going to act on the offense or demand it be taken down or anything like that? No. The, the, I know there's going to be a lot of people saying, oh, but Tim, you're being a hypocrite. How could you not be offended by everything else? Look, I'll tell you this straight up. I'm offended by, you know, ultra-nationalist, you know, uh, uh, racist individuals with conservative views as much as I'm on the left. The problem I have for the most part is, listen, when someone, when, when the people on the right, that's what they call it, I don't know if they're actually conservative, but when like white supremacists, real ones, are, are racist, they tell us. They come straight out and say, these are the things they believe. And I can be like, I don't want to associate with you. You can go away. It's easy. It's great. I, I love it when racist people come up to me and say they're racist so I can be like, okay, now I won't hang out with you, right? What happens on the left? They claim to be fighting for marginalized communities. And then they insult those who don't hold socialist views. Let me ask you this. Why should it matter if a gay man is a free market capitalist, a conservative, a traditionalist, a progressive, or whatever, why can you attack a person because of the politics that stand before their name, that describe what they believe? Are you saying that if you are a socialist, then it's okay that you're gay, but if you're a conservative gay, you need to, you need to be quiet? Why? Why should we tell a protected class of people that they shouldn't be allowed to speak about their perspective and what they believe and what they feel simply because they believe in certain political values. No, in fact, I would say the opposite. Conservative gays need to speak up and let everyone know how they feel because this is intersectionality, isn't it? The idea that you can recognize that different subsets of different marginalized communities experience different things. But no, certainly Deadspin wants to come out and tell them to be quiet. Basically, the story goes on to say, the conservative, the conservative writer, who happens to be gay, not that I think it matters, he talks about how when he wants to come out and speak about his politics, it's actually harder than to come out and speak about being gay. And I think this article sums up exactly what the person was trying to say. That simply, this is not an article condemning a conservative. It's an article condemning a gay man because he's gay and isn't far left. That is ridiculous. What offends me the most about how we see the Social Justice Community Act is that when they claim to fight against racism, when they claim to support the LGBT community, they don't. They support those who hold their groupthink. Look at what happened in, uh, I can't remember, it was uh, Michigan with, with John James, I believe. It was a black man who was running for the Senate and he lost to a progressive white woman. Where were the calls of racism? Non-existent. But look at Stacey Abrams and Brian Kemp in Georgia. Kemp wins, and they say it was racist. Bernie Sanders says, unfortunately, people can't just, they just can't bring themselves to vote for someone who isn't white. And what happened 
in Michigan. White men overwhelmingly supported John James. I cannot stand those who claim to be the champions of social justice who aren't. I believe in real social justice. I believe that we should not tell a person that based on the color of their skin, who they love, what they believe, that, uh, what, what they believe as a, as, a fund, as, as a religion, to an extent. Separation of church and state, I'll say that. But there are certain characteristics within an individual that should not determine whether or not we value them. It's the content of their character. Sometimes, when it comes to what they believe, there is a bleed over between the content of, of their character. But for the most part, if you're a Christian, if you're Muslim, if you're Jewish, if you're Buddhist, if you're a Pastafarian, that's fine by me, by all means. So long as that is a subset of the culture we live in, that you won't advocate for violence or engage in things based on what you believe, okay? One of the problems we have with the, with the regressive left and the far left is that it is a, it is a non-theistic religion, it is dogmatic, and they engage in violence on the behalf of these things, and that becomes a problem. But I don't wanna deviate. I just wanna make the point very simple. I do not appreciate this. And I think it's absolutely ridiculous that they repeatedly on TV claim to be the champions, claim to be the ones that hate Trump and think he's homophobic, and constantly use homophobia as the butt of their jokes. Here's me being the centrist SJW. I will absolutely advocate for the rights of individuals to be LGBTQIA, whatever. To, uh, to, I will absolutely advocate for those who are, who are uh, smeared or attacked because of the color of their skin, because of their gender, because of their identity. And I will call out the left just the same when they do it too. And it bothers me more because as I mentioned, they lie about it and they pull this stuff. Anyway, I'm not one to get overly offended, nor am I going to join a protest and scream at the top of my lungs because people do these things. You might, you might say, Tim, stop being a snowflake. And that's fair, but I'll just add this. It's my opinion. I don't like hypocrites. That's my opinion. And this is me expressing it. So thanks for hanging out. I'll see you guys tomorrow on the main channel at 4 p.m.